November 23rd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Daniel chapter 6 from the Old Testament. It seemed like a good idea to Darius to appoint over the kingdom 120 satraps who would be in charge of the entire kingdom. Over them would be three supervisors, one of whom was Daniel. These satraps were accountable to them so that the king's interests might not incur damage. Now this Daniel was distinguishing himself above the other supervisors and the satraps, for he had an extraordinary spirit. In fact, the king intended to appoint him over the entire kingdom. Consequently, the supervisors and satraps were trying to find some pretext against Daniel in connection with administrative matters, but they were unable to find any such damaging evidence because he was trustworthy and guilty of no negligence or corruption. So these men concluded, We won't find any pretext against this man Daniel unless it is in connection with the law of his God. So these supervisors and satraps came by collusion to the king and said to him, O King Darius, live forever. To all the supervisors of the kingdom, the prefects, satraps, counselors, and governors, it seemed like a good idea for a royal edict to be issued and an interdict to be enforced. For the next thirty days, anyone who prays to any god or human other than you, O king, should be thrown into a den of lions. Now let the king issue a written interdict, so that it cannot be altered, according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be changed. So King Darius issued the written interdict. When Daniel realized that a written decree had been issued, he entered his home, where the windows in his upper room opened toward Jerusalem. Three times daily he was kneeling and offering prayers and thanks to his God, just as he had been accustomed to do previously. Then those officials who had gone to the king came by collusion and found Daniel praying and asking for help before his God. So they approached the king and said to him, Did you not issue an edict to the effect that for the next thirty days anyone who prays to any god or human other than to you, O king, would be thrown into a den of lions? The king replied, That is correct, according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be changed. Then they said to the king, Daniel, who is one of the captives from Judah, pays no attention to you, O king, or to the edict that you issued. Three times daily he offers his prayer. When the king heard this, he was very upset and began thinking about how he might rescue Daniel. Until late afternoon, he was struggling to find a way to rescue him. Then those men came by collusion to the king and said to him, Recall, O king, that it is a law of the Medes and Persians that no edict or decree that the king issues can be changed. So the king gave the order, and Daniel was brought and thrown into a den of lions. The king consoled Daniel by saying, Your God, whom you continually serve, will rescue you. Then a stone was brought and placed over the opening to the den. The king sealed it with his signet ring and with those of his nobles so that nothing could be changed with regard to Daniel. Then the king departed to his palace, but he spent the night without eating and no diversions were brought to him. He was unable to sleep. In the morning, at the earliest sign of daylight, the king got up and rushed to the lion's den. As he approached the den, he called out to Daniel in a worried voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, was your God, whom you continually serve, able to rescue you from the lions? Then Daniel spoke to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and closed the lion's mouth so that they have not harmed me, because I was found to be innocent before him nor have I done any harm to you, O king. Then the king was delighted and gave an order to haul Daniel up from the den. So Daniel was hauled up out of the den. He had no injury of any kind, because he had trusted in his God. The king gave another order, and those men who had maliciously accused Daniel were brought and thrown into the lion's den, they, their children, and their wives. They did not even reach the bottom of the den before the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. Then King Darius wrote to all the peoples, nations, and language groups who were living in all the land, Peace and prosperity. I have issued an edict that throughout all the dominion of my kingdom, people are to revere and fear the God of Daniel, for he is the living God. 
He endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His authority is forever. He rescues and delivers and performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. So this Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. God, it's amazing to think how old Daniel was when this very famous story happened. Uh, he'd been serving at this point about 70 years through quite a few different reigns of kings. And that probably would have made him late 80s, possibly early 90s when this happened. And it's amazing to me that a lot of times people read this and think that the king was kind of a good guy here. He was trying to think of a way to get uh, Daniel out of this. And then King Darius, when he did have to put him in the den, said, you know, may, may your God protect you. And then he didn't sleep all night. And then he rushed in to check on Daniel. And a lot of people think, oh, what a good guy. <laughs> but as king, he did have, a, have the power and the right to overturn that edict that he wrote. It would have just meant that he would have lost faiths, uh, basically respect among his people for doing that. And he chose the respect and the power over saving Daniel. Um, and some people say, um, well, in doing that, he chose that he knew that Daniel's God would save him. And I think that's a little bit of a lie. Uh, because why was the king up all night tossing and turning? We know that Daniel had a more peaceful <laughs> peaceful night than the king did. Because Daniel did trust in you fully. But it does paint a really clear picture to us that how we live, live our lives is either a reflection of you or a reflection of our own kingdom. And I think about this a lot, especially lately. What does my life reflect and how do people around me respond to that? You know, the people around Daniel responded in quite a few different ways. Uh, some were jealous. Um, some wanted him out of the picture because his righteousness was stopping them from being able to deceitfully gain more money in their particular positions through bribery and things. Um, and then we see other people uh, like King Nebuchadnezzar and, and King Darius who come to realize that Daniel's faith, the reflection of you, God, um, is what is true and what is honest. And there is this amazing living God uh, that is sovereign over all the other gods. When King Darius wrote up his edict, the edict actually said um, that he was the go-between between between his people and God's. And that's why Daniel got in trouble because he went directly to you, God. So here's all these other gods that can't do things, can't talk to the people, can't communicate with the people. And here's this amazing God of Daniel who has this intimate relationship, one-on-one -on -one relationship with Daniel. And there's other people being changed by watching this relationship happen. God, I just pray that everyone listening to this video stop today and realize intentionally, for good or for bad, their life is having an effect on other people. That how they choose to live their life is teaching people things. Again, for good or for bad. And God, I just want my life, please God, I want my life to reflect your goodness, your kindness, your grace, your patience. Got to work on that one. Your patience your forgiveness, and most of all, your love. You didn't call us to only love the people that were easy to love or the people that we liked. You called us to love everyone and to love them like you loved us. I don't know why we get this thought in our head that we get to pick and choose who we love since we were pretty darn unlovable um, when you came into our lives and you changed our hearts. And probably there's days when I'm still <laughs> unlovable as I still don't have all this figured out, and, and at least in this lifetime, never will. God, allow us to have faith like Daniel. Obedience in the face of people who don't believe in the same faith. Obedience in the face of not being a people pleaser. And obedience in the face of persecution and consequences. God, it's you that I want to worship. It's you I want to follow. It's you I want to be obedient to. 
And if other people don't like that, then I am really sorry. Because they could have this amazing life and this amazing relationship with you as well. And I know that you, in your time and according to your will, will change their hearts and allow them to see that opportunity to be madly in love with you as well. God, I thank you for the relationship that we do have. That on those days where it does feel like I've been thrown into the lion's den, that I know that it's you I go to for my peace and comfort and sanity <laughs> and for my security. I know on those days when I'm not sure if the bills are going to get paid, it's you that provides that comfort and that security and always provides for me to make sure that I continue in this life. And on those days where emotionally I'm done, you come and fill me up and you fill me up with hope and fill me up with grace. God, I love you so much. In your son's name I pray. Amen.